Well, great. So we're now into week number two of Not a Silent Night Advent Series. The name of today's message is called, is called The Pearson of Mary's Soul. Uh, we're going through this Advent Series, and we're looking back at Christmas through the eyes of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And particularly, we're looking at, at Christmas through the eyes of Mary at various points in her life. We, been, we began last week in the year A.D. 48. Mary was 64 years old, facing her last years and getting ready to face her own death. As Mary was nearing her own death, what did Christmas really mean to Mary? And I believe that it was the hope of the resurrection, that when her son rose from the dead, went to be with the Father, that showed the people, because it said that Jesus appeared after the resurrection to over 500 people at one time, but he made several appearances to different people. And it says that when Jesus made the appearance to the people after the resurrection, they knew then that the resurrection was for them also, that he had defeated death, he had victory over death. Just as you and I, we have that hope of eternal life, and it's all because of the resurrection of Jesus. And so I believe that it was the hope of, that Mary had at the resurrection of being able to see her son again. Now here's the thing. Christmas and Easter, they come as a package deal. The Savior was born, the Savior went to the cross, and the Savior rose from the dead. It's a package deal. It comes together. And the one who was born in Bethlehem, the Scriptures tell us that he came not only to die, but he came to rise again. And that is to give you and I the hope and allow us to know that there is life after death. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me shall never die. Well, we know what Jesus meant. He didn't mean that you would not physically die, but you would not spiritually die. The Bible is very clear. It teaches us that when a believer in Jesus Christ, when they die, that their spirit, their soul, absent from the body, Presence of the Lord, amen. And so that is the hope that we have. Now what we're going to see is uh, Mary had the hope of seeing her son again. But this morning we're going to move back now from Mary's last years. We're going to move back 15 years. This is going to take us in from A.D. 48 to now back to A.D. 33. Mary's not 64 as we said she was last week, but now Mary is at the age of 49 years old. Uh, a couple of people walked up to me this morning and they said, boy, some of the things that you went over last week, I went through the scriptures and you were right. A lot of things were silent about Mary in the Bible. We said that there was a time that after Jesus' resurrection, there was only one time that Mary's name was mentioned again. And that's when he had told the disciples, Mary being one of them, to go back and wait on the coming of the Holy Spirit. That is the only time that Mary's name is really brought up. So we talked about how we went back and started looking at some of the church traditions of how they looked at Mary and how Mary lived out her life from that time on. So today, though, it's going to be about the resurrection today. Now, keep in mind, it was the day that we now call Good Friday. But to Mary, there was nothing that seemed to be so good about that day as she stood at the foot of her cross, at the cross of her son. So today, that's what we're going to kind of be looking at, is what took place when Jesus was there on the cross. Now, if we think about it, the Sanhedrin, they had come and they had arrested Jesus in the middle of the night. The scriptures are very clear about this. Jesus had just celebrated the Passover Seder meal with the disciples. He'd gone out to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And then Judas Iscariot, <clears throat> he came and he showed up with the guards. And what did they do? They come to arrest Jesus. And that night, Jesus was tried and he was convicted of blasphemy by the religious leaders. This was took place during the night. Then at 6 o'clock in the morning, Jesus was taken by the guard to the Roman emperor or to the Roman governor, I'm sorry, and he was charged with leading an insurrection against the Romans. Basically, it was a crime that was punishable 
by being crucified on the cross. When Jesus went to the cross, he wasn't the first one. That was a common practice throughout that day. And oftentimes they did it on a hill by a busy highway that went by. And it would show people that were coming through that area, they would look up there and they would see the bodies that would be on the cross. So here they arrested Jesus. Where was Mary that night when they arrested Jesus? The Gospels don't really tell us where Mary was at, but she was in Jerusalem, we do know that. And it's believed that she would have been present when Jesus was tried before the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. This was about 6 o'clock in the morning. Now think about this, mothers and fathers. If your son was going to go before the governor to determine whether he was going to live or die, where would you be at? You'd have been right there, wouldn't you? And it's believed that Mary was right there when he went in to see Pontius Pilate. And then Pilate came back out and he asked the crowd that had gathered outside the palace, uh, outside the palace, he said, what would you have me to do with this man Jesus? And they yelled out, crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate says, well, what has he done? And someone in the crowd answered, he leads a rebellion against Rome. He claims to be the king, usurping your authority and Caesar's. Crucify him. You can go right into the book of Luke and read a lot of this that I'm going over right now. A couple of the Gospels are very, very intense on just sharing with what I'm sharing with you this morning. So here it is, 6 o'clock in the morning. Jesus goes before uh, Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate brings him out to the people and they say, crucify him. But then now about 7 a.m. in the morning, about an hour or so later, before sending Jesus to be crucified, Pontius Pilate, he commanded Jesus to be tortured. They stripped him naked. They wrapped the crown of thorns such as this. They wrapped the crown of thorns and they pushed it on his head and they pushed it down over his brows. You can just touch this one here and it's got all types of little spikes sticking up in it. So you can imagine what it had to do to Jesus' head when they laid the crown of thorns on his head and they pressed it down over his head. Then they took and they stripped him naked and, and then they beat him with the tools of torture. Back in that day, when somebody had been disobedient, they would give them what they called 40 lashes minus one. So they would give him 39 lashes because if you gave them 40, it was considered to be inhumane. It was considered to be uh, too much of a torture. So it, if you read the scriptures, you'll hear the, the phrase 40 lashes minus one, which would be 39. And that's just what they did to Jesus. That left Jesus barely alive. And think about this, folks. It's seven something in the morning. And he's already been through all this. And they wrapped a purple robe around Jesus' shoulders. And they mocked him for claiming to be a king. They spit on him. And they, stuck, uh, they struck him. And then they mockingly bowed down before him. And they said, Hell, king of the Jews. And they did it in a mockingly way towards Jesus. Mary would have watched in horror. They led Jesus away, and he was just barely able to walk. And where did they lead him? Back to Pontius Pilate. And just imagine what's going through Mary's mind. You mothers and fathers, imagine watching this happen to your child. It's one thing to read about it to somebody else, but imagine your child. And I could just imagine all the things that had been going through her mind as she seen her son barely able to walk in a bloody mess as they were leading him away. Here Jesus was. He had been humiliated, been beaten until blood was covered all over him. Can you see now where this is not such a silent Christmas? This is real. This is things that took place. You can go right to the Word of God and read it. And everything I'm going to be going over with you this morning is found right in the Scriptures. But oftentimes we read through this and we don't really stop and think about what actually took place. But I want us to put ourselves in Mary's shoes. 
Look through the eyes of Mary about her son Jesus and about Christmas and the resurrection and what it actually meant to Mary. Then they, then they, took, then they took Jesus and then Pontius Pilate brought Jesus back to the people again. He was hoping that by the crowd seeing the way Jesus had been beaten and the way that he looked, he was hoping that this would be enough to satisfy the people. And then Pontius Pilate said, what would you have me to do with Jesus now? And once more they yelled, crucify him, crucify him. Now, we're getting ready to get about 8 o'clock in the morning. Pilate then ordered the guards to take Jesus outside the city. Outside the city walls to a place called Golgotha, where he would be nailed to the cross hung between two criminals, and Jesus would be left there to die a painful death on the cross. Those of you, how many of y'all in here have seen the Mel Gibson movie, The Passion of Christ? And as you've seen it, do you remember that when it showed the picture of Mary there as, as she was watching Jesus being nailed to the cross, do you remember the expression on her face? I remember seeing an interview with Mel Gibson on one of the Christian TV shows and he, they were asking him about some of the, the most impact parts of the movie. And he said one of them was seeing the suffering and the death of Jesus through the eyes of Mary, his mother. That had one of the most profounding impacts on people. It was just to see. Imagine what you would look like if you've seen your son being nailed to the cross, blood dripping all over him been humiliated in front of all these people, been spit on, and then them mocking down before him. And finally they took and they hoisted Jesus into the air. He hung there between two criminals. And John tells us in John 19.25, John tells us that Mary stood near the cross of Jesus watching and weeping as they drove the spikes into his hands and his feet. And among Jesus' final words as he died on the cross was a request for John, his disciple, to take care of his mother, Mary. We had talked about that last week. We believed that in, in Mary's final days that there was a great possibility that Mary had maybe died there in Ephesus where John uh, had spent the last years of his life, it's believed that it was there that Mary had spent her last years. Jesus was crucified about nine in the morning. Then about three in the afternoon was when he died. He hung up there for approximately about six hours. And when Jesus died, it was due to, it could have believed to be exhaustion, asphyxiation, the lungs filled with fluid, or possibly congested heart failure. We don't really know the exact thing that caused his death. But I'm sure that as Mary stood there for hours, watching helplessly, feeling the pain, feeling the sorrow, and the overwhelming grief of this terrible day, I'm sure that as she stood there those six hours, a lot of things had to have been going through her mind. What do you think some of the thoughts would be that would go through your mind as you watched your son hanging there on a cross? I'll suggest to you a few things that Mary had been thinking about. One of them was when an angel had appeared to her and told her that she was going to have a son. Mary says, how can that be? I've never been with a man. Do you think that could have maybe entered her mind reflecting back? What about when Joseph said that an angel appeared to him while Mary was pregnant? And Joseph, an angel made an appearance to him and he said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife and to name him Yeshua, God saves. I'm sure that Mary's now looking back from the time that Jesus was born right up to this particular time when he's hanging on the cross. When you're standing there for six hours watching your son go through this painful death, a lot of things will be coming through your mind. 
I'm wondering if she remembered that the Magi who brought Jesus gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. Or maybe she thought about the time when the shepherds came, and they, they come to the cave where she had given birth amongst all the animals, and the shepherds said to Mary, We've come to see the child. For an angel appeared to us and said, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. I'm sure Mary's reflecting on all these things. What about on the day? I remember one day, and I'm, I'm sure Mary did as I was studying for this, this one particular occasion. Mary had to have been thinking about the words that a, that a guy named Simeon had said to her. He was an old man, and when, Je- when Mary and Joseph, when they took Jesus to the temple on the eighth day to pay the taxes for a, a new birth, Back in those days, they paid taxes when a child was born. On the eighth day, they took Jesus to the temple. And when they walked into a temple, this says that there's an old man there. You can look this up in Luke chapter 2, verses 34 and 35. It says that an old man, he picked up Jesus, and he held Jesus in his arms. This was on the eighth day. And the old man picked Jesus up in his arms and the old man then spoke the words that I'm sure that Mary had to try to forget oftentimes. And this was the words that he said to her. Luke chapter 2 verse 34 and 35. This child is destined for the fallen and the rising of many in Israel. But he would be a joy to many others. He has been sent as a sign by God, but many will oppose him As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And listen to this. The last part of Simeon's words there was, and a sword will pierce your very soul. A sword will pierce your very soul. And what did Mary just sit there and watch? Some guy stick a sword in in the, in the side of Jesus. Now as Jesus hung there on the cross... His hands and his feet pierced. I believe that Mary finally understood what this old man Simeon was talking about. Do you feel that way? Can you imagine her just reflecting back on all these different things that took place? I'm sure that she had to. She stood there for six hours. From 9 o'clock in the morning when they crucified him to 3 o'clock in the afternoon when he died, Mary had stood there at the foot of the cross, and you can just imagine all the things that had been going through her mind for those six hours. Why do I believe that? Because the small details that surround Jesus' birth, about the resurrection, all these things, they could have only made their way into our Gospels as if Mary had passed them on to others after the death and the resurrection of her son. Think about it. Mary had to pass them down. So it's a very important thing that we understand this. In other words, the details of Christmas Day, they have come to us for the same reason that Mary would have, would have remembered them at the cross. Why? Because they were vitally important for us to remember them. We celebrate Christmas with red poinsettias. The poinsettias reminding us of the blood that, that flowed and the sacrifice that was made that day at Calvary. By the way, we said earlier that Christmas and Easter is a package. Christmas and the cross is a package also. Think about that. Christmas, the birth of Christ, and the cross. Jesus was born to come into this world to pay for your sin and my sin, and he took our sins and he went to the cross. It should have been you and I hanging up there on that cross, but he chose to take your place and my place that morning. So can you see how I'm saying the Christmas and the cross is a package deal, they go together? Because only the cross, when you stop and think about this, only the cross can fully explain the full meaning of Christmas. Jesus had done what he was born to come into this world to do. Is 
as I'm sure there's Mary stood at the cross and she listened, I could just visualize her just standing there at the cross. And there was her son that had been hung up there on that cross, nails pierced in his hands and his feet as he's hanging there on the cross. And right in the middle of these two common criminals that were being crucified, Jesus was there in the center, one on each side of him. Then one of them cried out to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Mary had to be listening to all this. She's standing right there. I've read many, many commentaries on this, and it's believed that in that day, they didn't hang him up as high as what we see him hung up in pictures today. Some of the theories that I have read, and there's been a couple different theories, but some believe that they were only actually hung three to four feet up in the air. Other people said six to eight feet. But either way, if he was hung up, I'm sure that she was able to come into eye contact with him as he was hanging there on the cross. And I can imagine her st standing there at that cross all that time, and I could hear, just visualize her hearing this thief saying then to Jesus, remember me today, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom. You remember how Jesus had answered that thief that was next to him? Luke 23 and 43, he says, Today you will be with me in paradise. Today you will be with me in paradise. Some of the people standing at the cross continued to hurl the insults at Jesus, even as he hung there. They still threw insults, saying, if you remember the movie, The Passion of Christ, it showed the soldiers and the other people, Jesus, if you're such a king and, and you're God, call your angels to take you down off of that cross. He could have. But if he would have, then he wouldn't have done what he came to earth to do. The nails did not hold Jesus up there on the cross. I tell you right now, it's his love for you and me. That's what held him up there. It wasn't nails. But it was love that held him up there on that cross. I believe that that's the point, that that was the point when Mary fully realized and she fully grasped what was happening at the cross. She must have sensed that Jesus had chosen to suffer with his last breath because he cried out, to tell us die. That means it is finished. He had done what he had come to earth to do. By the way, that's in John 19.30. So as Mary watched and she listened during those six hours, helpless, unable to save her son, I believe that it's possible that she remembered the events of the first Christmas morning. And she began to understand, though she could not save him, that he had come to save her and all human mankind. I believe Mary understood that that morning, or that day, I mean. Jesus, she couldn't save him, but that's why Jesus came, was to save us. And the cross of Christ, it points us to the brokenness of humankind, but it also demonstrates the magnitude of God's love for us, doesn't it? How many of you would be willing to give your son, your only son possibly, or just a child, be willing to give your child for another person? About that. Just picture your own child hanging out there on the cross. It offers, as Mary looked at it, and she understood the magnitude of God's love for us, and it offers peace with God and salvation through Jesus Christ. The salvation that you and I receive, it cost Jesus his life. But here's the thing I want us to understand. It also cost Mary a son. And so when I started getting prepared for the Advent series, I wanted to say, let's take a little different approach this year. Last year we did Christmas is not your birthday, but it's Jesus, as we looked at how we get caught up. This year I wanted us to take a, a different approach. Look at the eyes of Mary. Look through her lens. How did Mary look at Christmas? How did she think that, that everything was taking place? As we see here, it cost Jesus his life, but it's also cost Mary her son. 
So Christmas and the cross, they're a package deal. I believe that each week that we dig into this series, that each week we're going to be looking backwards. Normally Christmas is presented when you look forward. But this year we're looking backwards. We're looking at the day Mary's last years to this week to the resurrection. Next week we're going to be looking at Jesus in the temple and a couple of other things. And then that Sunday before Christmas, we're going to be looking at the birth of the Savior. And as we go through this and we look at it, if you would just stop and think about it, it's a true blessing that really shows us just how much God loves us when we see everything that Jesus went through and Mary went through. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we, we give you thanks, Lord, for the costly gift that you've given us. Lord, you gave it freely to us for our sins. By your Spirit, Lord, we're asking you to guide us as we seek ways to prepare to celebrate your coming at the Christmas. And as we try to live out, Lord, the calling that you have for us individually and also as a family, Lord, we're asking you, Father, not to let us get caught up in all the glitter, all the busyness that Christmas brings. Lord, don't let us get caught up in all the confusion of everything. But Lord, help us throughout this next three weeks, Lord. I pray, Father, that you help us keep in focus about what Christmas is about. And Lord, this week, as we focus on the cross, we understand that Christmas and the cross is a package deal. And Lord, I thank you, Father, just for loving every person that's in here today. And Lord, what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity that it is for us to be able to come into your house here, Lord, and to be able to work together and, and to study your word together and just to know, Father, that you have a great plan for us. So, Lord, I just ask you that you reveal it more in detail to us. But, Lord, then also I pray for the obedience that we will follow your word. And we just want to tell you, Lord, that we love you and we praise you. And, Lord, you are the most important thing in this world to us. And we thank you, Lord, that we have this series that Mary can look back. And, Lord, that we had the word to be able to know exactly the ideas and the thoughts of Christmas time through the eyes of Mary. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus and God's people said,